Hey guys, I'm Tim with BleepinJeep.com. In today's how-to, I'll be showing you how to install a Warren XD9000 on a Jeep Cherokee or similar vehicle. I'll also be showing you how to relocate your solenoid box inside the engine compartment. I've had a winch bumper on my Jeep for about two months now. I finally just picked up a winch for it. I bought a used Warren XD9000. It also came with this receiver. Let's bolt it too. The problem is, I need to bolt this down to my bumper with these four bolts. And if I do that, the winch should be sitting like this. On the bumper. And then my engage and disengage lever and solenoid pack will be sitting flat against the Fairlead plate and that won't work. So the first thing I'm going to do is unbolt the winch from this receiver and then we'll figure out how to move things around here so that it will work. If I can lift this thing in here, I'll show you guys the problem with how this winch is set up right now. So what we're going to have to do is remove the solenoids and locate them somewhere else off the winch or rotate everything onto the top. But I think what I'll do is put the solenoid pack in the engine compartment. And then we need to take this part of the winch and rotate that 90 degrees so that your engagement and disengage lever is right on top. Oh, that sounded important. So on this side of the winch, there's 10 Allen head screws. We're going to remove all of that and then we can rotate this lever until it's 90 degrees approximately on top. Once you have all of your bolts removed, you can break this free. So slide that apart and then we'll just rotate this until that lever is right on top the winch and your you can put this anywhere you want but you're subject to how those 10 bolts line up so once you get it close let's see that looks to be right on top so based on that that's where it's going to go just fiddle with it until it lines back up and start bolting this thing back together once you have all 10 of your bolts lined up and you have the threads started by hand if you're using a power tool like I am, uh, don't wrench them down. And just like a wheel or anything else with a uh, pattern to it, you're going to want to tighten these um, opposite of each other uh, thereabout. So in this case, I'll do 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and then just kind of uh, alter that back and forth until they're all snugged up. And don't get over ambitious with this thing. They don't need to be that tight. Once you have this all tightened up, make sure that your lever still engages and disengages. And if it still works, that probably means that you lined everything up right. Next thing that I need to address on this winch is the solenoid pack. So we'll flip this thing around. Ah, thing's heavy. All right, looks like it is held on with some hose clamps that may not be factory. Uh, so we'll see what we can do there. This will actually um, unbolt all these from the winch, keeping track obviously of where they go. That'll free this winch up from all these cables and we'll figure out a place to mount this in the Jeep and reconnect it. To keep track of everything, on the winch body itself, all these terminals are labeled. This one is F2, F1, and this is A. So I'm sure there's no chance that my masking tape will fall off. So I'll label all of this. And we'll pull these sleeves back. Of course I put that masking tape in the worst possible place. Pull these sleeves back and that will allow us to disconnect our terminals here. These nuts are all half inch if you're wondering. With your cables connected on top, there's 
one more last connection here on the bottom, which is also half inch. That's a little better. Next, I'll install the Fairlead grade eight washers. Sure. Yeah, no, you can't see. I'm just putting a nut on a bolt. One of the next things I need to figure out is where I want to mount my solenoid box. And I think I have just the place. Right between the air cleaner box and the brake booster is just a little bit of space. And I think if I can get these wires out of my way, I'll be able to mount this thing right here with the warn sign and controller plug-in facing straight up. The next thing I want to do is get this junk out of the way. I'll take those out. Those little bolts just hold your cover on and then it stays connected by the wires to the um, controller plug in here. And you could remove this to probably make it easier, but I don't need to. Um, what I'm going to do here is disconnect these uh, old cables and we're going to build some new cables and connect them uh, to here so that I can mount this by my brake booster where I just showed you and then have enough cable to run all the way over to the battery and to the winch. Replacing the cables in your solenoid box isn't particularly difficult, so I'm not going to go into it in great detail. The important thing is to label everything you take off and take it off one at a time. I'm just going to get a rough idea here of how much cable we're going to need. Another three feet, we'll call that uh, six feet. Right to here, we're looking at another foot approximate. Uh, so eight feet of cable for all three of those leads. All right, so I went ahead and measured out the cable that I need. And I'm going to cut it right there. Maybe. Holy smokes, I did it. With your cables cut, you can cut away some of this rubber insulation and get ready to crimp on our uh, terminals here. As far as the cables, I used 4 gauge for this. Uh, because that's what the original cables were from the solenoid box. So I just bought those from the local parts store. As far as making the cable ends, I don't have the proper tool to do that. But I figured out a system using my whelpers and a vise to crimp them together. And it actually worked really good. They are really snug. I can pull on them and they're not coming apart. Um, so crimping them like that plus using the heat shrink. Uh, I don't see any problem with that. It'll be fine. Alright, let's start taking this guy apart. You'll have to unscrew some of these solenoids in order to get all of your cables disconnected. This is the F2 wire. Excuse my sniffling, I have a cold starting here. Kind of sucks. And it's freezing out here in the garage. It's bleeping freezing. Yep. You know, it's just how it goes. Slip this guy on in. Put our little linker bar back. And we'll tighten it back up. And then one last cable hookup. This is our positive to battery. It's gonna go something like that. Let's back up. Alright, we'll put this cover back on. Just uses a couple of these tiny little bolts here to keep everything in place. And there's just one more on the back side here. 
All right, and that's how you extend your solenoid box. The solenoid box will sit something like that, and it's right on top of the inside of the wheel well. So I'm going to reach down here and sharpie where I need this thing to sit approximately. And uh, those sharpie marks I just put down there uh, indicate where I'm going to drill through the inside of the wheel well and uh, begin a foundation. We're going to build a little bracket and I'm going to bolt um, two little flat tabs right where I just sharpied. And then we'll build a square shelf off of those tabs for this to sit on. So it'll sit nice and level and as low as I can, um, about like that. This is just a little piece of sheet metal that I had laying around. It's about an eighth inch thick and I cut it into a strip about an inch and a half wide. And then I scored the two edges that you see there. That way it'll fold nicely and I can make it 90 degrees on both bends. That'll work. Now I need to cut this to the contour of the wheel well. That's what I'm doing here. And then I'll put it in place, and if it fits right, wow, fits great. Now I'm ready to tack it up. Once it's tacked, I can unbolt it from the fender, and then I can weld it solid. That bracket I just made, spray painted it real quick to keep it from rusting. Got a few runs, I guess I'm not the best painter in the world. Alright, well, let's tighten that down and then we'll have a nice flat bracket for mounting our solenoid box to. With our solenoid box finished up, I'm ready to move it into place on top of the bracket. And I think I'm going to use uh, zip ties, maybe hose clamps to connect it to the bracket. I haven't decided. This doesn't need to be permanent or bolted on. The, the bracket itself is really solid, and as long as this stays put, um, that'll, that'll be sufficient. So once we have that in place, I'm going to snake all these cables through. Uh, however they go, this guy goes positive to battery, somewhere like that, and all of these go to the wrench. So I'll snake those through somewhere, and uh, we'll be ready to hook things up. All right, so I have the solenoid box over there tightened down. I used just um, two hose clamps on it to suck it up tight. And uh, I fished the cables through everything you can imagine. And I ended up here. Now here's where we need to match up with um, what goes where. So here's F2. F2 is going to go here. F1 is going to go over here. And A is going to go right over here. All right, I'll bolt those down before they take off and then we'll move on to our ground cable. These are the factory wires that I pulled off the winch. I'm going to reuse these rubber boots here just to give it a little more added uh, weather protection. With all these hooked up, we just have one more cable to attach. This is the negative cable that goes from the bottom of the winch motor straight to the negative side of your battery. All right, so the ground wire from your winch motor, I have uh, fished through now. Now we're just bolting it up to the terminal here, and then we need to connect the other end on the winch motor. And then we'll be able to bolt our positive to that terminal. Bolt our winch down to the bumper, and I think, We'll be winching. And somewhere here on the bottom with the winch is a place for this thing. Alright, we just need to connect our positive terminal here. We now have power to our solenoid box. 
I need to finish bolting the winch down to the bumper and then we'll be ready to try it out. So these two were super easy. The back ones, not so much. And it's not really the fault of the bumper um, in this case. If I had a 3 8 air ratchet, I could fit it in the back side of this plate here and uh, tighten those 916 bolts to the back of the winch, no problem. Um, the, the thing is, it's so tight to get in there with a ratchet that I don't have enough room to cycle the ratchet. And uh, I have a, a, a fine tooth ratchet, even with that, there's just barely enough room inside this bumper to get it to work. And I, I could get this bolt over here tight, but for some reason, because I'm using my right arm, I guess, I'm not flexible enough or something, I can't quite get that one. So I'm gonna do what I do best and bore a giant hole in things. Not my first choice, but um, right here from the bottom, I can uh, bore a three quarter inch wide hole, which is just wide enough to fit a 9 16th socket through on an extension and I'll be able to access those no problem. Um, again, not my first choice and you probably won't have this problem if you have this bumper and you have an air ratchet or if you have any other bumper. Um, but uh, I'm not too worried about it affecting the bumper. It's certainly not going to weaken it any. Much better. All right, well, I guess we better find out if it works now. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you guys this process. This is called cable swaging, where a shop will use a 500 ton press to crimp this piece of aluminum over your cable ends, which forms a loop. This piece here is called a thimble die. What the thimble die does is it shields your cable strands from your hook. Um, so no matter how much you use this thing, your hook will never be wearing on your cable. And this is uh, far superior than using cable ties or that kind of a system. Okay guys, that's it for today's how-to. I hope you learned something. Uh, I certainly did throughout this install. This was uh, a pain in the butt, really. Mostly feeding the wires through and snaking them out of the way. Um, overall, it was a good experience though. I learned a lot about uh, winches doing this. And I hope this video helps you guys install a similar winch on a similar vehicle. All right, well, check out bleepinjeep.com. Please thumbs up this video. Also, please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, do you think you can make a video as good or better than this one? If so, we'd love for you to join our team. A lot of people don't know this, but YouTube actually pays when people watch your videos. You know those little ads that pop up before the video? If a viewer watches those for 30 seconds or longer, the advertiser has to pay YouTube, and in turn, YouTube has to pay you. Also, those little ads that pop up at the bottom of the video, in the middle of the video, if somebody clicks those, then you get paid as well. So, we are looking for more partners to join and grow our YouTube channel. If you want to do any kind of videos that pertain to Jeeps or off-roading, welding, building things, that kind of thing, make a video, let me see it, and uh, we'll let you know if you make the cut or not. So, thanks for watching. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about us, and we'll see you in the next video.